Well, dude, I mean, it looks like you absolutely... Well, we should, we'll, we'll just start talking about it. Hey, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this thing rolling. So anyway, thank you for those of you who are hanging out this morning. Delta, some other people I saw. Um, thanks for the gifted sub from Unorthodox. Um, for about the next half hour, maybe even 40 minutes, just depends on what we decide to talk about. Um, I changed this from being an interview to being more of a talk. Um, because I think interviews sound so like, oh my God, it's an interview, you know, uh, you know, there's yeah. pressure. I'd rather just have it be as casual as possible. But for those that don't know me, my name's Smarmy Tank. This is Rhino. Um, about, not about, about January 1st of this year, I decided to just choose 20 people. I didn't have 20 that day, but I started to choose what I would consider to be 20 people that I wanted to somehow try to get to know them better. I wanted to support them. Um, and I wasn't going to ask them to do anything for me. I just wanted them to let them know that, hey, I'm going to be around to support you and promote you and try to help you in any way that I can. And and I called it the 20. I hashtag it the 20. And most of the time, most of my support has to do with the Twitter you know, post just saying, hey, this guy's hunting shinies. You know, please get over there and give him a hard time. Or, hey, this guy's playing a game I don't understand, but it seems cool. He's a nice guy. Go check his channel out. And throughout the last six or seven months, I've gotten to know a lot of these people some of them less than others. This is a guy who I really haven't spent a ton of time getting to know him. But honestly, I've actually focused like the last two or three weeks trying to spend more time so that I would have some content for this. But at the <laughs> same time, um, I have kind of gotten to know him in little tiny increments. So this is Rhinot. Um, I told him the funniest thing last night. I said, hey, man, I'm preparing for our talk tomorrow. So I'm brushing up on my Canadian. So we'll start there. Um I have a Canadian faction of people that I didn't choose on purpose, um, but Rhinot is definitely one of them. In fact, don't tell him, but he's the most Canadian sounding of the Canadian guys. Um, <laughs> unless, won't tell Jazz. unless you start talking to Shiny about hockey, and then he starts saying offense and things like, you know, very Canadian. Um, but anyway, I tease. Um, dude, tell us a little bit about where you're at. Obviously, we don't want to know specifics, but I mean, give us kind of an idea of where you're at in Canada. And... Um, you're three hours in front of me, right? So you're obviously on the on the TO side of the map, right? Yeah, so I'm near Toronto. I'm oh. I'm pretty close. I'm about like an hour or so east-ish of Toronto. Oh so, wow. You're like yeah. even more east than Toronto. Oh yeah, yeah. Dang, dang. Okay. Yeah. And you're married, correct? I am, yes. Any yep. any kids that I don't know about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, unless they're also kids that I don't know about, no. Fair. <laughs> I was joking with Jazz actually, and I told Jazz I said I said you know in in, in the U S we have one eight hundred U S search, and uh, back in the day you'd call one eight hundred U S search and you'd say I think that you know I don't know who my parents are, and then you'd get a call if you were like the parent someday. Hey, this is one eight hundred U S search calling. I wanted to let you know that your son's looking for you, and you're like, what? I have a kid, you know, for those drunk Friday nights when you were too young to remember. Um, so I used to joke about that stuff. Um, Delta, thanks for the host, but um. Yeah, man. So you're in the eastern part of Canada. No kids. I think you have some pets, probably, right? You have some some animals, probably roaming around the house. Maybe no, just you. Nope. Just, just you. Just wow. Us two, just us two for now. How long have you been married for, Ryan? Uh, so just over a year. So we got married on oh, May wow. the fourth. Okay. Wow. That was definitely before I was even on Twitch. So I wouldn't have even been around for any of those celebratory type things. Um, tell everybody if you will if you can a little bit about what you do right now besides obviously stream pretty regularly what, what what kind of work or what kind of career are you working on so i mean delta's delta's already going to know this but um i work for ubisoft so i am a i'm a video game tester right now working my way up into me but uh yeah i i work for you which is like pretty dope that is pretty dope uh Ubisoft would be like uh, the uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, right? That would be... Uh... Yup, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, that's them. Now, that would beg the question, uh, how come we never see you rocking any uh, Siege? So, um, I never got into Siege. <laughs> like, in, in all honesty, I never, I never got into Siege. Like, my main, my main favorite titles from... Um, from Ubisoft are is the Far Cry franchise mainly. Okay. So I, I really enjoy the the Far Cry franchise and also Watch Dogs as well. Um, but yeah, I never I never really got into Siege. 
I know a lot of people, like, it's incredibly popular, but it was just something that I never really picked up. Dude, you know what's crazy is I didn't even really put that together. Um, you know, when I started playing more games, if you will, because, I mean, my, my life before I was on Twitch was I basically played Star Wars Battlefront, and then when Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out, I played Star Wars Battlefront 2, and then... My wife was like, I'm tired of watching you play this all the time. Why don't you play something else, you know? Because I was basically playing on our couch, like, in our living room. Like, so when I would play, I would take over the entire house and, like, everyone would be like, hey, we want to watch TV, you know? And I'm like, God, get out of here. I'm playing Battlefront 2. You know, <laughs> rage on the couch. But um, I started playing Watch Dogs. I actually downloaded and started playing Watch Dogs, and I freaking loved it. Um. Needless to Watch say, Dogs I was such a good game. I was a little disappointed in Watch Dogs 2. Um, it just didn't have the same kind of feel to it. I mean, I know they tried to recreate it, but in, like in a different city. But I wasn't into it as much. Um, so right on, so cool. So when we put this thing out there, you're gonna get a whole bunch of new followers and a whole new community because we'll be like, the guy works in a video game company. Woo! <laughs> you know these kids, right? Let me let me actually. I've got something pretty cool behind you. Oh, uh, behind okay. Me, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. behind you. Good, do, good grief. Behind us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Behind you, Smarmy. Like, look behind you. Uh, let me just grab some real quick, and I'll show you. All right. So I've I've brought this up on my stream uh, a couple of times here, but uh, so the first title that I worked on for Ubisoft was Far Cry Five. Um, and whenever you work on a title with them, the day that it releases to the public, everybody that works on it gets a cut free. Okay. So I just, I don't own a PS4 or an Xbox for that matter, but I just grabbed a PS4 copy because that's likely the, uh, the system I would get. And, uh, the day it came out, we went around the, uh, the studio and we had everybody that worked on it. Oh, wow. Sign, sign the jacket. That is fucking cool man so yeah so i've got that is uh, so I've neat own, i've got my own personal copy of far cry 5 signed by pretty much the entire dev team at the toronto studio that's cool now now not to get all into your your business about ubisoft so is ubisoft located in canada or is there just a place out there in canada that's a dev team or their their headquarters like their main worldwide headquarters is in paris oh geez so, yeah they're 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 a french company um, the Canadian headquarters is out in Montreal. I was actually just out at that studio a couple weeks ago. Um, but they've got the main studio in Montreal, then they've got one in Toronto, they've got one in Winnipeg, and one in Quebec City as well. Wow. I and did that, not know that. That's just for Canada. That's just for Canada. They've got plenty more all over the world. It's kind of funny that you're, you're actually explaining all this and talking about this because, like, I, I, I try not to categorize people ever. It's just not a good thing to do. But in a fun way, I always categorize everybody that I kind of know. And like you and Shiny and a couple handful of other people, you're considered my nerds. You know what I mean? Like you guys are another layer of serious about your gaming or knowing about your games or or understanding the game. Like he's laughing a little because he knows what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I know, I, I know it's true. <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a guy that talks and plays games. You know, I someone will ask me like questions sometimes about a game, and I'll be like, I have no idea what, what, what you mean or what you're asking me. You know, some guy tried to, you know, drop some Yu-Gi-Oh like slang on me last night, and I'm like, he's like, it's your turn, go. And I'm like, uh, I'll play the Queen of Spades. He's like, no, no, this is a duel. And I'm like, okay, you're one of these nerdy kids that obviously knows about something that I don't probably because i'm old or just never played it but um so let's talk about that then um so tell us nerd about all these things that are behind you that are all pretty much video game and or comic and or anime related tell us a little bit about your passion behind you for obviously what is a lot of things all right so i'll, I'll kind of go like shelf by shelf yes i, I love it let's go <laughs> okay so the top one up there those are some jumbo ships from a, a Star Wars tabletop game. So I've got the Tantive there, a mini version of a Star Destroyer, um, the Imperial Carrier, and then kind of like a Scum uh, Carrier. So okay. I don't play. I don't play it anymore. But like I kept those models because okay. I kept all the models, but I kept those ones out because those are the like the nice big ones. Okay. Uh, and then this shelf this shelf and this one um are all uh they're all marvel 
uh, figures. I can see Captain America's uh, uh, shield, shield right here. Yeah. Yeah. So some of them are uh, Funko Pops that I've taken out of the box. Some of them are other uh, just Marvel figures from like other collection sets um, or just like some miscellaneous uh, type stuff. Then this shelf, these three shelves are all uh, Marvel Funkos that I've kept in their boxes. Um, just because, like, there's some, uh, like, exclusive versions or... I see uh, Spider-Man, bro. That's all that matters. Yeah, the so the top one, it's really hard to see because of the glare, but right. um, the top shelf, the bottom row, are some of the 10th anniversary Marvel Studios, like, gold chrome They look characters. gold, yeah. Those look sweet. And then the top row is five of the six um, Infinity Stone colored chrome Thanos pops. Wow, Infinity War. Uh, one of so one of my guys I've come into contact lately with is a guy that's on Twitch. His name is I am Star Lord. He's asking if there's a Star Lord Funko on the wall. Uh oh yeah, there there definitely is. There is. It's over on this you shelf. You got you got to grab it, Rhino. You got to grab it. You got to. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go get you it. You got to get see. it. He said all that matters. Here we go. Yeah! In honor and of Star-Lord. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Chad, if you're just joining us, uh, what this is is a talk uh, with one of the 20. Uh, this is Rhinot926. Um, and if you guys have some questions in chat, by all means, feel free to throw them in, and we will definitely address them um, here for probably the next 20 minutes. Um, so, dude, um, last shelf, last shelf. We didn't get the last shelf, uh, the last row of shelves. So over here, uh, these ones are still kind of like work in progress, uh, mm. but it's a lot of uh, Disney stuff. So my oh, wife wow. has a lot of her collectibles on these shelves here because um, she really she really likes Disney. So any like Disney Funko Pops uh, or just other like Disney characters, uh, she's got those shelves there. So it's really kind of an interesting thing. And and I don't know. I haven't run across too many people. I, in fact, recently I found a guy that actually lives like in the same area and neighborhood that I grew up in. But um, for people that don't know me, I grew up in Anaheim. And if you don't know where Anaheim's at, okay. it's where Disneyland is located. And yep. so you can imagine living here for 40 plus years. I've been to Disneyland, oh, a couple of times. And it's <laughs> interesting because when you live here, and I would imagine this is just like it is anywhere in the world if you live near something like that, is it's probably a lot different for someone who lives by it and goes to it all the time because most people when they go visit Disneyland they go and they just crack out for days there they go like 10 12 hours a day and they ruin themselves going to every ride as we're over the years it's like oh we're gonna go and just do this part of the park today oh we're gonna go and do this part of the park and um I actually hit my wife up yesterday I'm like hey so uh you know we got to get to Disneyland and pay the $500 entry fee and we got to go see Star Wars right she's like yeah I know but when do we go <laughs> But um, I have a, a special place in my heart for Disney in general. Um, not always a good place in my heart, but for the most part, I mean, I grew up on it, if you will. It was just right down the street, honestly, from where I grew up. So um, so moving forward, let's talk about your variety of games that you play. I know that you're cracked out on Shinies right now, but let's talk about some of the other games. And, and let's start with, like, when you were a little kid, you know, um, what was the first game you can remember playing that you were like, I'm going to go play this rather than do anything else? Like, what was Super your first? Mario Bro Super Mario Brothers 3. Really? Um, yes. Really? So that gives you an idea how old he is, by the way, too, because mine was Super Mario Brothers, okay? Because um, yeah. that was the only game, by the way, on NES back in the day that you played. Um, I actually had a ColecoVision before that, believe it or not. But, all right, so so you have you have a little passion for Super Mario, or that was just your first game and you moved on from there? Uh, a little a little bit of both. Um, I always I always loved uh, the Mario game, uh, but that was the main game that I played a lot of because um, my parents had an NES. Oh, nice. So I would play I would play that a lot. Um, I I don't remember exactly some of the other games they had. Uh, oh, Castlevania on NES. Loved was, Castlevania. My uh, wife, my I wife. I never beat it though. Yeah, no, my wife, so when I met my wife, like, you know, you're talking to your, you know, the girl when you first meet her, and you're like, I wonder if she's going to be okay with the fact that I like to play video games still, and I'm like 20-something years old. And she was yeah. like, oh my god, she's like, Super Nintendo, let's go. And so when we got our first, um, I guess it was a Wii, and they let you download those old school games, 
She's like, yeah. oh, oh, she's like, Castlevania, Castlevania, Castlevania. And I'm like, Castlevania? I'm like, that game was okay. She's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> she played that thing for like a month, dude. She was, was so was cracked so out on it. I had so much fun. And the Zelda I games. Know I, I know you're a big Zelda fan too, right? Breath of the Wild was a masterpiece. It was so good. I'm so excited for the direct sequel for it. Coming, I think it's like next year or something. Now that's the last game, correct? Is that the last game? Or is that uh, before the last game? Oh, uh, you mean like when it takes place? Yeah. It it takes place directly after um, directly after the events of Breath of the Wild. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of your um, your passions and stuff. I know that about maybe what was it two months ago, maybe three months ago, you were doing um, some charity streams and talk a little bit about how you got involved with that, what that means to you, um, how that worked. So um, I was, yeah, so in the month of May, um, I did, a, I participated in like my first ever like charity stream event for a, uh, for a, a thing uh, called uh, St. Jude Play Live. So it's a, an annual thing that they do every year to raise money for um, uh, children's cancer research at the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So I, uh, I was just waiting for my train one morning and I was just scrolling through Twitter and I saw an ad for it. And um, I, I saw it and I was just like, I'd always kind of wanted to do like a charity fundraiser type thing, but I just didn't really know how to go about setting it up, especially since it had been my first one. Um, and then when I just saw like how everything was just integrated with this whole uh, system and just pretty much how easy it was for the streamer to set up i was like this seems like a really good opportunity and the fact that it was also like with a children's hospital um was really kind of close to me because my wife's uh one of my wife's brother well actually both of my wife's brothers uh benefited greatly uh from from the work of children's hospitals when they were younger wow so, I was I was thinking like this was a perfect opportunity for me to do a fundraiser because I had always wanted to do one, but also uh, a charity for a, an age group that was really close to home. So it sure. just was kind of like a no brainer for me. Sure. Um, recently, I've I've come across this new uh, not new to, new to me community called the Grizzly Nation, and um, you know I kind of I kind of spent most of this year focusing on you guys as much as I could, you know, catching you guys as much as I could, trying to get to know you guys as much as I could and really networking, not only on stream, but off stream with each of you guys. And each of you, is, it's amazing, you know, when you choose some people and decide you're gonna really, you know, put some effort into it, you really start to realize that you've got all this other talent, not just sitting in front of a camera playing games and being funny and all these other things that we do, but like there's people that have real lives, we work real jobs. I mean, I didn't go out and choose a bunch of partners, you know, that are working, playing video games for a living. Gosh, I wish we were all there, but you know, the reality yeah. is we all have real lives and day jobs and stuff like that. So it's amazing to find such a variety of people with such a variety of backgrounds. And then you talk about stuff like this, but I met a guy who invited me to do the Make-A-Wish Foundation charity stuff that he's doing in November, which nice. like, it just gives me a chill to say it because my wife's brother's daughter went through that and got to go like on a Make-A-Wish thing. And now she's fine. She's She's um she's recovered. She's been um two years free, but um yeah, it's it's one of the most effed up things in the world. This this cancer that hits these kids because you know they're yeah. so innocent. They haven't had a chance to do anything in life yet other than just be a kid, and then this hits them. So it's like it's amazing that you do that, man. And that's so huge. Um, I have so much respect for you and anybody else that does that for St. Jude. And I've certainly whipped open my tiltify and thought about you know which one of these things would I like to do. And that's definitely one of the two that I think I'm interested in along with make a wish. Um, mm -hmm. so does your wife game as well? Uh, she does occasionally. She does like when I ask her to, <laughs> she's the grown, um, she's the grown up in the family. <laughs> pre pretty much, pretty much <laughs> as is mine. Um, <laughs> she, she pretty much like the games that she'll play on her phone are those like, uh, like you can just pick it up for like five minutes kind of a thing. And oh. just, like, she also like, really plays heyday a lot so she like has her farm and everything that she'll work on oh god one of those but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um we've we've done some we've done some gaming together we've done uh some streams together before i'm not sure if you've ever caught when her and i have uh, done just dance together on stream 
I have not caught that. I've only heard about it. Yeah, I've so only we, heard about it. I've I've convinced her to I've convinced her to participate in that, and that was really fun. You know, it's interesting. But, uh, it's interesting in, in saying that answer to you. Uh, it's funny, like when I did this to begin with, I just kind of started picking those of you who kind of seemed like you were around, seemed like you were supportive people. And I didn't really think of like time zones you were in or when you streamed. I just thought, oh, this guy's cool. This guy's cool. She's awesome. She's awesome. You know, and then the next thing I noticed, it's like, it's actually really better for me that I picked a lot of you guys that are on different time zones because it, it gives me the ability when I, especially when I work from home, because I work out of my house, like if I want to flip this thing on at four o'clock my time, it's like the prime time for all of you guys to stream. So I actually get a chance to go and watch you guys stream as where once it gets to be seven, eight, nine o'clock my time, that's when I want to go on and I want to stream. But the yeah. problem is, is that all of you guys are asleep by then, um, you know, or going to sleep by then. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny because everyone's like, hey, how come I never see anybody like in here that you know? And I'm like, because they're all asleep, man. They live in like France and, and freaking <laughs> Sweden and Australia and Canada. Unless it's, of course, Jazz, who will just literally play at like three in the morning. So... Perfect, yeah. <laughs> perfect for me because I'm up at midnight all the time. Um, what are some things you're working on right now? Like, where where are you with your stream? Like, what does your stream mean? Is it currently just a hobby? Is it going to continue to be a hobby? Is there a passion to stop working at Ubisoft someday and start being a big streamer and, and make a living off of it? So I, I've said this, like, for a while. Like, the only thing that could pull me away from working at at, uh, at Ubisoft is if I was able to stream full time and basically be able to pretty much be like the sole provider so that my wife also wouldn't have to work. Mm. So um, that like that would be the only thing that would take me away from my day job, which is if that's ever going to happen, that's like years from now. So <laughs> I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not too too concerned about that. So but, um, <laughs> that's funny. I think we're all in that same category for the most part. I mean, I know me, um, it would take a lot of money for me to make more money than I make at my current job. I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to do what I do for a living. Um, I live in Southern California, which it's already ma massively expensive to live in. So you can imagine what I might make here probably seems like a fortune to some people where they live in a place where that money would go a lot further. I mean, I was visiting my brother-in-law. He lives in Carson City, Nevada, one year for Christmas, and we went to buy some groceries. And we walked through the grocery checkout stand. I go, man, that's like two hundred dollars worth of food. It was like eighty bucks. And I'm like, yeah. Why is this only eighty dollars? They're like, because it's Carson City, Nevada. The food just doesn't cost as much here. The gas doesn't cost as much here. And I'm like, Jesus, you're right. The gas was like three dollars. It's like four fifty where I live. So, um, yeah, Toronto ain't much cheaper. Yeah, no, you live, Toronto's nice, by the way. I've been to Toronto a couple of times. Um, it's the, it's what I call the cleanest city I've ever visited in my life. Like, they don't really have alleys. Like, you think of an alley in New York City with, like, dumpsters and trash, and it's all grimy. In Toronto, yeah. they have, like, a park built in their la their alleys. It's like a park. There's, like, a park bench, trees, like, planters. I'm like, this isn't an alley. This is a park. They're like, yeah, no, it's really clean here. All the vehicles yeah, run on gas, like, natural gas, like, all the city vehicles. It's it's interesting because like if you live in the city you don't think it's clean but uh, to a visitor <laughs> like a visitor will be like this is like this city is so clean like yeah, it's, it's amazing, amazing. And exactly then all, all the and then all the locals are just like it's filthy <laughs> like no <laughs> this is gross <laughs> like um, I went like I just said uh like I went out to Montreal if, like a few weeks ago for work and when I was there I'm like this city's so clean it's way nicer than Toronto. <laughs> I've never been to Montreal. I certainly got to find my way up there at one point in time. It's, you know, I loved it there. You you may not know this about me, man, but although I grew up in Southern California my whole life, my dad was from Michigan. So at a very early age, I was introduced to hockey and mm. quickly became an LA Kings fan, quickly became a Detroit Red Wings fan. And so I literally feel like one quarter Canadian because I've watched hockey my whole life. And so especially yeah. like with Shiny and you and Jazz and some of the people that, you know, talk about this, that, and the other, I'm like, hey, I've been to Toronto. Hey, I know Toronto. Hey, I've had some poutine before. I've been to T-Bones. You know, I don't know if you know what T-Bones is, but T-Bones seemed to me to be like the fast food restaurant out there where you could get like food at like two in the morning because everything's closed out there like at 10. Um, at least it was when we went. Um, got to go to the Hockey Hall of Fame and touch the Stanley Cup, which like yeah. was like one of the highlights of my entire life. 
My son's yeah, like, well, even over me being born, Dad. I'm like, yeah, even over you being born. It's the Stanley Cup. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool uh, that we've got like the the Hockey Hall of Fame just like an hour drive from my house. The my favorite thing about the Hockey Hall of Fame is actually the restaurant that is in the bottom floor of the Hockey Hall of Fame. It's called the Move and Pick. Do you know what I'm speaking of? I, I've heard of it, yeah, but I haven't actually been there myself. So the Move and Pick is like a higher quality food place. But it's all laid out in almost a buffet style, but not a buffet like laid out for you to grab and eat. But just each little place, one's making pizza, one's making like home cooked meal style, one's making sandwiches. And you go through there and you have them make you the thing and they just stamp your card and then you, you check out and they charge you from like five different places. It's, it's actually, to me, back in those days when I went, this is probably 15, 20 years ago, most amazing food place I've ever been to is the move and pick, dude. I'm like, they need to have this in the U.S. They won't. Yeah, there's there's, cool. a, there's some other places. Uh, I think there's a couple restaurants like down in Niagara Falls that like that that are uh, that are kind of similar. You just go through like a big line and they just throw a bunch of stuff on your plate, whatever you want. And then you just go to a checkout. Yeah, I lost like five hundred dollars at the Niagara Falls Casino. I don't want to talk about it. The waterfall. <laughs> the waterfall was pretty. Um, <laughs> really pretty. For the five minutes I looked at it after I was seething about my five hundred dollar blackjack loss in the casino. Um, so. <laughs> So tell me this, Th this is a, a question I think I ask all of you guys. You know, one of the things that I think was important to me, not from a standpoint of wanting to get anything out of this, you know, creating this, this little group, if you will, but what certainly has ended up happening, and I know why it's happened, it's for whatever reason I chose a lot of you based on the fact that I saw a lot of you. A lot of you did visit my channel. A lot of you were active in a Discord, or I saw you doing things for other people on Twitter. I know that you know the whole Canadian crew up there, obviously. Tell me what it is about you. What's gone on in your life? What's happened to you that you're this guy that will just stop what he's doing and at some point in his day decide to go watch other streamers? Like, where does that come from for you? I guess, like, it's always been, like, I've always wanted to do my best to help other people, and I always try to put other people ahead of myself. and like i've so like coming like outside of like streaming um i don't really talk about this too too much on the channel but i've done like a lot of volunteer work for well over 10 years i want to say with like a lot of different um a lot of different camps or just like programs at my church or things like that so i've always been just that guy that tries to see a need and then go and make that need happen so I've just, it's just always been like, I guess you could say like a passion for me to just try to help other people. And especially like if I see something that, that I know that I can do rather than, you know, saying like, hey, so-and-so needs help with something. I'll just be like, yeah, they need help with something, but I, I can do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, so. man, you're, you're definitely cut from a different cloth than me. Um, you know, I grew up pretty selfish most of my life. What's in it for me? How about me? What about me? And obviously, you know, again, these are never about me, but some, some things happened in my life where I had to, to change into the kind of person that was like, hey, go make the coffee. Hey, go put those chairs away. Simple stuff, which turned into, hey, so-and-so needs you to go over there. They've got a real big problem and they need you to come and help them. You know, or at some point in my life, it became where they just called me and said, hey, man, can you come help us? Um, or can you find someone to come help us? And then I would just be, you know, ready to go and help people. And so that's where it's come from for me. I've had to, it's been a practice and a labor of love, if you will, to, to not be a selfish person. So I don't know why, but I seem to have identified that trait in almost every single one of you guys. And although I never said, hey, please come and support me, please come and sub to me, please come and cheer bits to me, you guys all do. And I don't ever ask you guys to do it. You know, I don't ever require you guys to do it. But um, it's amazing how I seem to have just chosen this large group of people that all have a huge heart. It's just, you know, I really feel like it's the essence of how we are all going to grow our channels. It's, it's going to be 20 or 30 individuals. And I know you have a good solid 10 to 15 of those people now. I come to your channel, I always see those same five, seven, eight individuals constantly mm -hmm. hanging out there, mods in your channels. Um, you know, man, it's just, it's just been so awesome. And I feel like, you know, as shocked as I was to feel like I didn't have a lot of an idea of what's going on with you, 
here talking to you today, I realize I, I I guess I have spent some time with you. I guess I guess mm -hmm. I do know a little bit more than I thought I knew about you. Um, you've certainly shared a few things I didn't know today, dude. I never heard you say that you worked at Ubisoft. By the way, how could I have really? missed that one thing that seems pretty <laughs> like you do that for a job every day? You think I, I mean you were even talking about going to Montreal. You know when you're talking about that trip you just took to Montreal. It never came up in that conversation you were having with whoever you were talking to that you're going there to work for Ubisoft. I mean, I guess you just don't say it when it's your daily thing. But um, mm -hmm. what is your um, – as we'll wrap this thing up, so what is your, like, hope right now for, you know, the future of streaming? How do you, how do you feel like we are? I mean, let's, let's touch on the whole – you know, I, I, whether you like it or not, obviously Ninja was a very well-known talent. Um, he made a decision. I'm sure it was a business decision more than anything to yeah. decide to stop streaming on our platform, which is Twitch, and head over to Mixer. Where do you see things going? What's your opinion on that if you have one? Or, or, or what's your take on, you know, how that's going to affect us? Is that going to make us better? Or are we going to be like, oh, shit, we better get our game together on Twitch? What do you think? So I definitely think that, like, with, with Ninja now being, like, exclusively on Mixer, it definitely kind of opens up, like, I guess, like, you could say, like, a top slot, I guess, for somebody. But I don't think it's necessarily a... Obviously, it's going to be a, a big, like, detriment to Twitch and to Amazon, and it's, a, and it's a big financial loss for them. But, I, you know, as soon as, like, I saw Ninja move, people were saying, you know, like, oh, Twitch is dead, everyone's going to Mixer. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, I'm thinking, like, no, it's not, it's not like Twitch had Ninja and then a bunch of other people that only had, like, four average viewers. Like, Ninja was, like, the biggest name on Twitch, but he wasn't the only name on Twitch. So, well, I definitely, like, it's definitely going to be a, a detriment to the platform, but I don't think it's, it's fair that people are like, oh, yeah, like, Twitch is now dead. Yeah, no, you're 100% you're right on that particular point, because I know for me, I mean, dude, Shiny, I, I can't remember the channel, and I'm not going to flip around and turn off the screens on accident here. But there's a, a channel that Shiny introduced me to about, a, like, a month ago. And it was something like Games Played Fast or something. I can't... You probably know the name of this channel. It's where these guys rush through games, and they play competitively. Awesome, awesome Games Done Quick. There it is. Awesome Games Done Quick. Um, there was 230,000 people on that channel. Now, I've seen Ninja do a day where he played games with some famous rappers and shit. There was 630,000, but other than that, the most I've ever seen the guy have on a regular basis is around 70, 80,000 people, maybe 100,000, you know, or special events, you'll see 150,000, 200,000 people. But this was like on a Thursday. This was like on a Thursday, 230,000 people watching these guys play Super Mario Brother rush through. They were playing every title from beginning to end as fast as they could. There's 230,000 people. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think that we're going to be in too much trouble I mean, obviously, from a standpoint of that video game being Fortnite, obviously, is his main game. Uh, you know, sooner or later, that thing's going to slow down. I mean, that's just the way it is. But look at GTA V, right? GTA V has been out for, what, 10-plus years easily? I mean, it's had to have been out for a long time. And it's kind of had – yeah, it's, it's had a resurgence lately with all these role-playing servers. And it's become yeah. fun and really interesting to watch them play these role-playing servers and get really serious, by the way, about these role-playing servers. You know, and I think that I think that we're in good hands. I don't know, man. I, obviously, there's a ton of things that we wish they would change and could change. And um, I'll tell you this, man, switching to Mixer for me and I, and I consider myself someone that does a, a OK, you know, at streaming and getting paid a little money every month from my affiliate status. I would make zero if I went to Mixer today. It would take me some time to get back to where I'm at, which has taken me, gosh, dang, a long time just to get where I'm at to make, you know, 100 bucks. You know, and yeah. not that that's, again, the reason that we all do it. Most of us don't do it for that. But it's nice to get that money because I take it and just cheer it back, sub it back, whatever. I mean, I just use it to, to continue to grow. At least that's what I try to do with it. Um, plus, apparently, my wife says I use some extra money that's not that money um, to do it as well. Um, just checking behind me to see if she's in the room. Um, she doesn't know that I, like, blow a lot of money every month on this. She has no idea. Um <laughs> Anyway, well, listen, man, I, this has been so fun, so enjoyable with you. It has really been incredible, you know, trying to get to know you guys since January. And 
I made like a, a declaration, I guess it was a few months ago. I said, look, man, I have not spent enough time with Rhino. I have not spent enough time with Storm Fortress. I have not spent enough time in this person's channel. I've kind of had, you know, part of it's I've had seven or eight of you guys really core because you guys stream a ton, you know, so it's really easy to catch everybody. You are more scheduled. You obviously have, like I said, you're a professional. You have a real job. So, you know, you're a little bit older, you know, than, than some of the younger kids that we we, we have in this community. But, man, I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, thank you for being a solid guy, man, just in, in general. Like, whenever I come to your stream, I, I feel, you know, it, I can't say Canadian because I don't go to Canada all the time. But it's like in the, in the States, we call it that Midwest. There's like this Midwest or, or Southern, like, hospitality that exists out here where, mm -hmm. you know, you can come to these small communities and the doors are not locked and everybody knows each other. I feel like that every time I come to your channel. Every time I come to your channel, I feel completely welcomed. And even though you're playing a game which I have zero idea, as I've mentioned before, what's going on, what you're talking about, you're literally speaking in tongues, especially when you're playing that Pokemon game. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I've got enough content out of it to say, uh, he's hunting shinies. I know nothing else of other than that. You know, and then little by little, I'm like, hey, did you find any shinies? And you'll explain, like, what you did to find them. And I'm like, God, I'm almost finding myself wanting to watch this more. I'm more interested in it, even though I'm really not interested in it. But I am. I am. Like, he's got me. Ca he's captured me. So I actually sat and watched you play for an hour the other night, dude. And I still didn't understand what the hell was going on. But I really enjoyed it, you know. And I've oh, enjoyed, you. I've enjoyed your community. I've enjoyed True Support Gaming. And by the way... I would be, it would be criminal for me not to mention that Rhinot is a huge part of True Support Gaming. Um, it's uh, something that Delta has created along with Andrea Dawn. Um, I actually just started following her yesterday, by the way. Um, I don't know what's going on with Twitch. I swear to God, I was following her for like the longest time, but I didn't yeah. even have a follow on her. And so I hit the follow button for her, watched her for a while yesterday. And for anybody that ends up watching this on the on the VOD or on the video that I'll put out, if you guys are interested in finding some really cool indie type games or or just smaller titles that not everybody's playing, you know, a million people are watching and playing, you gotta come watch this guy and some of the people in True Support. They play some really cool games. She was playing a game last night about starvation. What was it? Um Don't Don't Starve Together. Yeah, I knew you'd know the name. I knew you would know the name. Um, don't starve together. I, again, never heard of that in my entire life. Was captivated for at least 45 minutes watching her play that last night. Really interesting game. It kind of had an anime feel, like it was kind of super cartoonish as far as the graphics go. But, um, mm -hmm. is there anything you want to talk or ask or know about me before we go? Or any questions you have about the 20 before we go? Um, I guess, so, well, since, since you're giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Guess, well, what was uh what was the main thing that got you into streaming to begin with? Oh, listen to this guy just giving me a beach ball here. <laughs> um, you know, I have I had this 13-year-old kid at the time and and we were just basically our relationship was screaming and yelling at each other. You know, leave me alone, I'm busy playing video games or he was like leave me alone, I'm busy playing video games and my wife's like you guys are killing me. She's like you need to do something with your son or you're like never going to have a relationship with him. And so again, I was playing a ton of Battlefront 2 on the couch in our, our living room, and my son was in his room playing Fortnite. And I would come in there and see him playing Fortnite. I'm like, this game looks stupid. This game looks like a cartoon. Why don't you play Battlefield whatever? Why don't you play COD? He's like, Dad, this game's the greatest game in the world. Just watch. You'll see. And I'm like, whatever. So I told him, I'm going to play this Fortnite game. And I'm on my couch playing Fortnite, and I'm just getting just so upset, so mad. I can't even like play for like a minute before dying. You know, I'm like, this sucks. I'm, I, this is not going to work for me. And so I go into my son's room and I'm like, hey, Evan, my son's name's Evan. I said, hey, how do you do this? He goes, dad, dad, I don't have time to show you how to do things. Just Google it. I'm like, are you kidding me? What do you mean just Google it? He's like, dad, seriously? Like, you're lame. Go Google it. I'm like, my 13-year-old son just called me lame. So I go and I Google it. And guess who I find with videos on how to play Fortnite? A guy named Ninja who at that time, by the way, hadn't completely exploded. He was obviously one of the more well-known, bigger guys playing Fortnite at the time. He was probably considered the best guy in the world playing Fortnite at the time. And I started watching this guy's videos, and then, of course, I started noticing they were on Twitch, and I'm like, hey, son, what's Twitch? He goes, Dad, really? Google it. I'm like, really? Seriously? So I Google Twitch. I find his channel. I start to watch him, and I think at first, oh, this guy's a complete Yahoo with his blue hair. 
And as I started watching him play and talk about the game and just he was very entertaining, I'm like, this is really... I don't even know how I felt about it. I was like, this is weird. And, and then I started seeing the donations come through. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, what the hell's going on here? This guy's getting people to send him money for playing a video game and being funny with blue hair. What the hell's going on in the world today? Like, this is really crazy to me. So of course, as time goes on, I get better at the game. I start playing with my son and I see from all the guys talking about TwitchCon and I said to my son, hey, you want to go to TwitchCon? He goes, yeah, let's go to TwitchCon. Cool. So we go to TwitchCon in San Jose last year. And what happened, the true answer to your question is this kevin smith canadian guy by the way um yeah what's up b so if you guys don't know who <laughs> kevin smith is he's like jay and silent bob chasing amy mall rats um he's uh he was a heavy set guy that was very funny wrote a lot of very funny movies for like if you were a teenager 20 years ago he showed up at twitchcon to do a 30 minute talk and I said to my son, hey, I know who this guy is. Because I knew no one at TwitchCon, right? I knew like Ninja, Tim the Tatman, a few famous people. I knew no one else. But I saw Kevin Smith's going to be talking for 30 minutes. I'm like, dude, we're going. So we go to the Twitch <laughs> theater. We sit down. And Kevin Smith, for 30 minutes, basically talks about this. When I was a young person and I was trying to find out what I was going to do, I told my sister that I was going to become a creator. And my sister told me, no, you're not going to become a creator you either are a creator or you're not. And he's like, oh yeah, no, no, no. That's what I'm going to try and do. She's like, no, 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 no. It's not what you're going to try to do. You either choose to be a creator. That's what you're going to be. And you go and you create shit and you don't care what anybody says about it. And you just keep doing it because that's what you want to be. That's what you are. You're a creator. And so me and a lot of people don't know this part of the story. I did a lot of acting when I was younger. I did a lot of theater when I was younger. I did a lot of film work when I was younger. I wanted to be an actor. I mean, I grew up in Southern California. Who doesn't want to be an actor and move to Hollywood, right? And have right, all this yeah. glamour in their life. But I was really funny, believe it or not. And I, I, I kept going to the comedy clubs on Sunday nights, which were like the nights where if you were an amateur and you wanted to go up for, for three minutes and do your spiel, you know, that's how comedians usually used to get found in the old days. That's where Robin Williams and all these famous comedians got their like start was at this exact same comedy club doing three minutes on a Sunday at seven o'clock at night for free. So I was doing that for a while and I really had a passion to create. And then, you know, life takes over, life takes over and you know, you go in a completely different direction. And so for what happened to me is hearing him talk about that at TwitchCon and being a creator is I, I asked myself literally on the flight home, you know, is that me? Am I, am I, am I underneath all of this just real life shit that's going on with me? Am I just a creator? Will that give me some sort of drive? Is that a passion of mine? Do I even care about this? Would this be something I could do? Would I care about it? Would I would I be fulfilled by it? And the answer ended up being yes. And so that's what's happened is um I came back from there. I talked my wife into, you know, letting me buy a PC with a couple monitors and some other peripherals. And then I started streaming in November. And um it's turned into something beyond what I could have possibly imagined. Um the fact that people will donate a dollar or two or or five or 10 or 30 to me to sit around and watch me yell and scream at video games is amazing to me. Um, but as I've told my wife several times who, sh who just snuck in and is sitting over in her chair, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it really has put together a part of me that, that I didn't know I was missing for probably the last 27 years of my life. You know, since I stopped going to those comedy clubs and trying to, to be a comedian and trying to be a talent, and, and I just went off and instead of making people laugh, I just started selling people bank products. You know, that's, that's what happened. And so now I still sell bank products. That's my day job. But um, I really enjoy flipping the camera on and, and doing all this shit, you know, for four or five hours, um, you know, four or five nights a week. And it's become, it's become cathartic in a sense. It's become fulfilling in a sense. But more than anything, you know, when I got frustrated at the end of that year trying to grow my channel from two viewers to three viewers... And realizing this isn't going to work out the way that it's going and it's because it's all about me and i'm all, only in it for me once i still i stopped and drew my focus to this the 20 and literally created this little hashtag for you guys my entire life has truly changed you know just everything about it um you know it's easier to go to work every day knowing that i get to come home and potentially hang out with my family and then flip this thing on and do what we do so Man, look at you asking that question. You had to know that answer was five minutes long. Jeez Louise. <laughs> so tune in for the interview with Smarmy Tank. Um, yeah. <laughs> the five-minute interview at the end of the interview. But, brother, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate you. I really admire you. 
and I really thank you for being part of this little community and letting me hashtag you and, sh and, and tweet you out. And I look forward yeah, to just getting to, to deep, deep in that here, you know, in the coming uh, years and months. So thank you very much for doing this, Ryan. I really, oh, oh, what is your name, by the way, that we can call you? Or is your name actually Ryan? My, my actual name is Ryan. Yes. Your actual name is Ryan. Okay, see, I yeah. never ask anyone these questions, by the way. And I'm always shocked by their answer most of the time. Like, <laughs> jazz says he doesn't really like jazz, but that's just his thing. That smooth jazz. And I'm like, you don't even like jazz? You're not a jazz guy? He's like, no. I'm like, what's your name? He's like, Matt. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks to everybody that came by through the chat. Before I let Ryan go, does anybody have a question for him that's in the chat? There's a few of you lurking. I'm going to give you guys 20 seconds. Anybody have a question? Height, weight, anything that you want to ask him. Come on. He probably won't tell you any of that stuff, but he's six <laughs> foot four, not 190. Brother, my, wife is my what? wife is taller than me. Your wife is taller than you? My wife is actually taller than me as well when she wears shoes. No, my, standing flat foot, my wife's about an inch taller than me. Are you kidding me? Well, you're a better, yeah. you're a better man than me. I couldn't live with that. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, tell everybody what time you're going to be on before you go. Are you gonna, you, I think you sent out a tweet saying you're going to go on after this, right? You're going to play some games? Yeah, I'm going to go on in about 15 minutes or so, give or take. Perfect. I'm going to let this stream run for 15 minutes on the Be Right Back screen, and then when you're live, I'm going to send everybody over to you. Oh, cool, dude. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, man. And for the rest of you guys, I'll see you guys on probably later this afternoon. This evening, I'll be playing some games as well. But in the meantime, hang out for like next 15, 20 minutes. Go search some channels. And then uh, you guys can catch Ryan when he's live here in the next 15, 20 minutes. Dude, thank you so much, Smarmy. This was this was really fun. Yeah, I, no. I had a great time. It, it was, you know, don't tell any of the other 19 people, but this was the best one yet. All right, I love you, man. I got to go. <laughs> All right, later, Smarmy. Bye.